Hey everyone, this is Omer Can and welcome to another episode of Design Principles. I've been playing a lot of Shadow of War recently. I know it's a bit random. It was free on PlayStation Plus so I got it and got really into it. Basically, long story short, I just really wanted to draw some orcs. Nothing fancy, your typical fantasy orcs. But wanted to try a different workflow and use this opportunity to talk more about shape design. Especially shape design when it comes to designing something focused, like a portrait. Previously, we have talked about shape design mostly when it comes to designing a whole character. In these cases, the shapes that dominate the design end up being pieces of clothing or armor. But we can also apply the same way of thinking to parts of anatomy and the light and shadow shapes as well. Before we go into all that, let's rewind back a bit and talk about the workflow I followed. As you all know by now, we really enjoy working with Blender here at Polycosm. Just to keep things fresh, I decided to start with sculpting this time. The workflow I'll be following at the beginning is very similar to one explained by Marco Bucci in this video. For more technical info, I suggest you go watch his video because I don't want to just repeat what he has already explained. And it's a really good tutorial, so you should definitely check it out. I'll be talking more about the design theory in this video, so I'm going to leave the technicalities aside. For the first sculpt, I'm working towards a character that will have an angry and tense look to him. To be able to achieve this, I'll be aiming to work with sharper shapes overall. This applies to the overall shape of his head, as well as smaller shapes within such as his nose, cheekbones, ears, etc. For the purposes of this, I don't really need a super detailed sculpt, just enough information to act as a base. It's been a long time I have sculpted actually, and I quite enjoyed using this opportunity to dust off my sculpting skills again. I find a lot of common ground between sculpting and drawing. I think they are very closely related. Sculpting is a great way to test your understanding of form. Sometimes you get used to using certain shorthands when drawing, and you think to yourself, oh yeah, I know how to draw noses, I mastered the anatomy of a nose. And then, when you try to sculpt it, the gaps in your knowledge show right away. I experienced this before, and I still do at times. It's a really good idea to put your knowledge to test like this now and then with sculpting to find out if you really understand the basic anatomy. Just as I would if I was drawing, I'm following along the forms as I'm building things up. I especially like using the clay strips brush and leaving these marks on the sculpt. It's really similar to how I'd be hatching and drawing to add texture and define form. In this case, since our character is going to be an orc and orcs apparently all have really dry skin, this type of texture will come in handy later on. For finer details, draw sharp brush works pretty well, especially to get those dried lips. I guess these guys don't moisturize enough. Once I'm happy with the sculpt, and I realize that I started to zoom in too much to fiddle with details, I stop the sculpting phase and set a light in the scene. I moved the light around until I was happy with what I saw on the sculpt. I wanted a dramatic look, but I also wanted to get these really sharp shadow shapes. I'll be tweaking the shadow shapes more later on, to really reinforce this idea of tension and anger and danger. I'm not a stickler for 100% accurate and realistic shadows. I think if you are just leaving the shadow shapes to a mathematical calculation, you're kind of missing out on the opportunity to design your scene. Okay, it's time to give Grease Pencil a shot. Grease Pencil is quite an interesting tool, and I really like the option to be able to draw right on the surface of your sculpt. I think this opens up some really interesting opportunities to create 3D models that have a hand-drawn quality to them. I'll be exploring this more in the future, but for now I'm using it to quickly add more details and flavor to my sculpt. It's nice to be able to draw with the light information already there. This way I can leave the shadows less detailed and focus more on the light areas. I'm making small changes as you can see with my drawing. For example, I'm sharpening his head shape. I'm changing, well, sort of reinforcing the light shape on his left cheek. So feel free to make such adjustments as you're drawing. Once I'm happy with the drawing, I take two viewport renders out. 
one with the grease pencil layer hidden and the other is with the grease pencil layer only. This way, I can bring my line work into Photoshop as a separate layer. Jumping into Photoshop now to do some painting over. First, let me show you a little more clearly how I design my shapes. As you can see, I'm keeping the triangular shape language consistent throughout. Not with just the shape of his hair and nose, but also the way shadow shapes are cast as well. As I paint over, I need to keep the shape language and hierarchy intact. The paint over itself is pretty straightforward. I've got all the information I need, so it's just mostly grunt work. I'm adding more texture and detail where it's needed, and building up my darkest darks and brightest highlights. Alright, now let's say we were asked by an imaginary art director to create another orc that is supposed to be all harmless and friendly. Well, this guy doesn't quite suit that role, so let's jump back to Blender and modify his sculpt a little. We are going to go with rounder and smoother shapes this time. Again, thinking about the overall silhouette of his head, as well as the secondary shapes in there. I'm using snake hook and inflate brushes to make some quick adjustments. I'm making his cheeks fuller, smoothing his jawline and making his nose rounder. You can see right away how his whole personality is changing just by adjusting the shape language and the proportions a little bit. I'm also adjusting his brow a little. I don't want him to have as much tension there as the previous guy. Same as before, I'm setting up a light and looking for a lighting scenario where I get to see some nice round core shadows on him. Once I have what I'm looking for, it's time to start drawing. My line work has to once again complement the shape language that I have sculpted. Where it's necessary, don't be afraid to simplify and amplify things. And of course, don't forget about the dried lips, every orc has them. Okay, we are back in Photoshop once again. Let me draw over to show you guys clearly how the shape language has changed for this one. As you can see, the dominant shapes are all rounder this time. His nose, his ears, his jawline, everything is a lot more rounded, giving him a softer, more friendlier and harmless look. By modifying the pre-existing scalp slightly, I was able to get a completely new character with a different personality. Again, back to ground work. Just put on a nice podcast or something and get the rendering. You can take the stage as far as you want. I won't be going for a fully polished illustration here because I'm feeling kinda lazy and I genuinely don't have a lot of time. So I'll be focusing on the focal areas mostly and leave the detailing in the darker areas pretty loose. From this point on, I'll be jumping back and forth between the two separate orc drawings. I really like this way of working when I have multiple pieces going on at the same time and if I need all of them to have the same kind of style and finish at the end. Instead of focusing on one, you know, bringing that to a finish, and then focusing on the other one and try to make that similar to the first one, I like this back and forth better. I'm adding some indication of armor on this guy just for fun. It felt awkward to keep him naked. I didn't really have time to design a cool looking armor set either. So, you know, I'm just drawing your generic spiky sharp orc armor that this guy probably bought from a budget retail shop for orcs or something. The other guy gets some robes, which kind of makes him look like a monk, and I think I really like that. Alright, after some further polishing and refining, here are the final illustrations for both of our orc characters. You can see that just by following simple shape language theory, we can change a lot about a character's personality, and in effect their story. Looking at these guys together, I think they will be good friends. I'd like to see a buddy cop movie about these two where they investigate a mystery together. Maybe the mystery of the missing moisturizer. And that brings us to the end of another Design Principles episode. As usual, feel free to leave any questions you might have in the comments below. Thanks for your time and see you all next week. Take care everyone.